Hi everyone, in this video we'll be looking at how to configure your footer in Avada. There is also a companion video on how to configure your header, which is linked below the video. Ok, let's begin. The footer is the bottom part of your website, below the page content, that typically shows on every page. Part of the footer is the copyright bar, the very bottom section of the website. The footer is a very flexible area as far as content goes. It is often used for contact details, secondary menus and social media widgets, but it can hold pretty much anything that you want to be available on every page. There are a few good posts on the net about what content best belongs in a footer, so I will link to them in the description below the video. For this video, let's look at the footer on the university demo here, and see how it's been set up. As you can see, it has a background image and four columns of content. Let's see how it has been configured. In Avada, the footer section is controlled in the theme options, found at Avada, Theme Options, Footer. You will see there are three sections, footer content, footer background image and footer styling. Let's start at the top. The first option is to decide whether you even want a footer area. If you turn footer widgets off, that entire section is removed from the front end, just leaving the copyright bar. For landing pages you may want to remove the footer, but that would be done in the Fusion Page options on the page in question. The next option is to decide how many footer columns you want, and you can choose from 1 to 6. The footer in this demo actually has 5 columns, but as we noticed on the front end there are only 4 columns of content, and one empty one, which effectively aligns the footer to the left. That's a neat trick. Next there is a Centre Footer Widgets Content option, but in this case, that has been left off. The footer special effects has none selected, which is the default, but if you prefer you can add a parallax effect, add a parallax image, make the footer sticky, or have a combination of sticky with parallax image. Below that, the last three options control the copyright bar. We can disable it, we can centre the content, and the last option is the content field where we add the text we want to show. This field can use HTML markup and the code you see here generates the content in the left of the copyright bar, as we can see here on the front end. The next tab is for the footer background image. It's not widely used, but this can be a very creative option as this demo illustrates. Here there is a full width graphic with the content to the right, that offsets the left aligned content from the columns. There are a few options underneath, for a 100% background image, and repeat and positioning options. Depending on what you are trying to do, these options might come in handy. Here the graphic is set to no repeat, and is centrally positioned both vertically and horizontally. Then comes the footer styling tab. This is very similar to the header styling. The first control is for 100% footer width, which in this case has been turned on. If we return to our demo, we can see that the footer content goes way past the edge of the content area, utilising the entire width of the page. Then there are the footer padding controls, which as you can see here can take a variety of inputs. There is a footer background colour option, but in this case that's not really in play as we already have a background image. There is a very thin border at the top of the footer, and the option for a footer widgets area vertical divider line in this case has been turned off. The next few options relate to that divider, so the next relevant option is the footer widgets area padding. This is the minimum space between the widgets and in this case has been set to 15 pixels. At the bottom of this section are some styling options for the copyright bar. Here the padding has been set to 30 pixels top and bottom, the background colour has been set to match the graphic, and again a thin border has been set. Finally, there is a typography section for the footer, where you have pretty much full control over the font and colour of the footer area text, including the copyright bar. Here a range of colour options have been set to match the demo, including link hover colours. Before we leave the theme options, there is one other tab that affects the footer here. It can be found in social media, footer social icons, and this panel controls the footer icons we can see at the far right of the copyright bar. They can be turned on or off, and there are several configuration and styling options available. The links themselves are sourced from the social media icons tab, found a few tabs up. 
This is where you create the social media links that can populate your header and footer. Okay, so that's how the footer has been configured and styled in this demo. But where is the content coming from? There is a separate video on widgets and widget areas, and I will link to that in the video description below in case you are unfamiliar with them. But let's go and see the widgets that are populating this footer. You find them at Appearance, Widgets. Here we can see our five footer widget areas that have been created based on the theme options choice. The first one is a custom HTML widget, which generates the contact information you can see in the first column here, under the heading Avada University. This widget also takes Fusion shortcodes, so even if you can't write HTML, you can generate content in a page and copy it here. Of course, with all code, it's best to know what you are doing. An alternative to this widget would be the Avada Contact Info widget, which is very easy to configure. Inside the Footer Widget 2 area is simply a Recent Posts widget, configured to show three posts and the date. This is straightforward and displays nicely in the second column here on the front end. Footer Widget Areas 3 and 4 each have two widgets inside them, and all of these are text widgets with unordered lists, creating small menus as we can see here on the front end. A similar result could be achieved using the Navigation Menu widget. Finally, if we return to look at Footer Widget Area 5, you can see it has been left empty, as its only purpose is to affect the layout of the Footer Widgets area. So as we have a final look at our footer on the front end, hopefully you can see how pretty much any footer you can conceive of can easily be created in Avada. Okay, this concludes our video on how to configure your footer in Avada. If you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.